give a geometric description for the following set of points. So we have this big inequality here. We have x squared plus y squared plus z squared minus 6x plus 10y minus 4z plus 22 is greater than or equal to 0. So looking at this given inequality here, the fact that we have an inequality is telling us something about the geometric description. So I want you to recall that we know the equation of a ball in R3 is defined as follows. So we know that the equation of a ball in three dimensions would be some x minus x naught squared plus y minus y naught squared plus z minus z naught squared is less than or equal to r squared. And this is where, of course, that x naught y naught z naught is the center point of this ball and the absolute value of r is the radius of this ball. So this looks similar to what we're given with the exception of the direction of our inequality. So here with what we're given in this question the inequality is facing the equation versus in the definition the inequality is facing or it's opening to the right hand side. So what does this mean? Well this means with the equation that we're given that this is the outside of the ball centered at some point with a radius of r. So here we are working with the outside of a ball in r3 centered at that point x naught y naught z naught with a radius of r. So now that we have determined what exactly we're working with in this equation, our job is to find the center point and the radius of the outside of this ball in three dimensions. Now, I want you to make a note before we begin the algebra here that when we're talking about the outside of the ball, this also includes the sphere. So we'll make one final love note to ourselves that this includes the sphere itself. Alrighty, so here we go. We're ready now to go ahead and find a more specific description of our sphere. So let's give ourselves plenty of room. All right, so in order to determine the center point and the radius of this sphere, we need to complete the square for each component. So that's where we'll start. We want to complete the square of each of our components. So x, y, and z. So to begin, what I'm going to do is group up my like terms. We'll group the x terms, the y terms, and the z terms. So we have the x terms. We have x squared minus 6x plus we have the y terms. So we have y squared plus 10y plus now we have the z terms. So we have z squared minus 4z. And then notice we've got this constant 22 here. So I'm going to subtract 22 from both sides of the inequality and say that this is greater than or equal to minus 22. And now don't get nervous about that negative. We still have to complete the square. So in order to do that, we need to identify the constant coefficient on each variable of degree 1. So for x, that's going to be negative 6. For y, that's going to be positive 10. And for z, that'll be negative 4. So let's complete the square for each component. We'll have x squared minus 6x. And now remember to complete the square, we're going to need to add half of that constant squared to both sides of the inequality. So I'm going to just leave it as here for now, but we'll don't forget we have to add it to the other side too. So we need to do this to each of these components. 
So I now have plus y squared plus 10y, and now we're going to add half of 10 squared to both sides of our inequality. Doing the same thing for the z component, we have z minus 4z, and now we are going to add plus minus 4 divided by 2 squared, and this is going to be greater than or equal to 22. And now we want to go ahead and be sure that we add whatever we did to the left-hand side of our equation, we also need to add to the right-hand side. So that means we're going to need to add minus 3 squared, which will give us plus 9. We're going to need to add positive 5 squared, which is going to give us plus 25. And last but not least, we're going to need to add a minus 2 squared, which means we're going to need to add 4 to both sides. All right, so let's simplify. So we have this x squared minus 6x plus 9 plus y squared plus 10y plus 25 plus z minus 4z plus 4. Ooh, and I forgot my square, so don't forget your square. And that's greater than or equal to. So we have minus 22 plus 9 plus 25 plus 14, which leaves us with 16. And so in completing the squares we've done here, we can now see the perfect squares on the left-hand side. The x component is equivalent to x minus 3 times x minus 3. The y component is equivalent to y plus 5 times y plus 5. And our z component is equivalent to z minus 2 times z minus 2. Hey, and we can even see the perfect square for the radius for 16. We, of course, know that 16 is 4 times 4. So let's rewrite this now in our standard form. So we can say that this is x minus 3 squared plus y plus 5 squared plus z minus 2 squared. And this is going to be greater than or equal to 4 squared. And we've done it! Woohoo! So we can say that, therefore, this is the outside of the ball. So the geometric description is the outside of the ball in R3. And this is centered at the point, or centered at the ordered triplet. This is our x naught, y naught, z naught value, where x is 3, y is negative 5, and z is 2 with a radius of 4. So this is the center point and the radius of our beautiful outside of the ball in three dimensions described by this geometric description.